Welcome everyone. I'm Zen Honeycutt of Moms Across America. This is our Monday night Moms Connect call. And tonight we have our monthly very special guest, our dad champion, Dr. Eric Plasker of 100 Year Lifestyle. Dr. Plasker uh, was just featured in the Authority Magazine. He was a keynote speaker at uh, Life University. He's been practicing for 35 years as a chiropractor and instructor to probably thousands of students and has, um, has been supporting people's ability to heal themselves, which is something that we at Moms Across America love. Our, our mission is to educate and empower mothers and others with actions and solutions to create healthy communities. And we're so excited that Dr. Plasker is in alignment with that and supports the work that we do. Welcome, Dr. Plasker. Welcome, so glad to be with you again. Love what you're doing. You're a warrior for the cause, the mission for moms across America. So I just am honored to be a part of what you're doing. I touched on the body's innate ability to heal can you just elaborate on that a little bit with your experience in, in being a, a chiropractor and doctor for many years? That is very contrary to what most Western medical doctors would say. They would say that you need this pill or that pill or this vaccine or you know, some type of drug to heal your body. They would not normally say that your body is, can heal itself. So where do you come up with that? Well, uh, it's been around for as long as people have been around and way before medical doctors were around and way before the AMA was around and way before the pharmaceutical companies were spending billions of dollars on uh, ad camp buying people's brains. And so, I mean, after 35 years, the one thing that, you know, what you're saying is, is true on some level that, hey, maybe just maybe as a last resort, in our opinion resort to drugs and as a very, very, very last resort, resort to surgery. But between now and then, there are so many things that you need to, we need to understand about the body's ability to heal itself. It's not rocket science. You cut your hand. Sometimes you forget to put a Band-Aid on it and it heals anyway. Uh, you eat bad food. You, your body heals itself. I mean, you, if you eat poison, very often you'll have You'll throw up to get rid of the poison. Your body will eliminate. You'll have diarrhea to get rid of the poison. You have so many innate. You froze up for a moment. You responses that your body automatically, and we learn to understand it, then we can nurture it and not be afraid. I think that's the biggest thing that I have seen over time is that fear is dangerous. Anger is dangerous. It makes us do things that are not right because we're afraid and we don't understand and what I have seen and what we have practiced with our family is, is that and with the thousands of doctors that we have trained and the the tens and tens and hundreds of thousands of people that we've worked with over the years that when you get people to understand and have confidence in their own body they don't buy it. their bs meter becomes super duper duper high tech super sensitive and so you don't you watch a, I call them flying people drug ad on television and you don't buy into it because you hear the, and this drug could cause this, 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 and this. It could cause death. It could cause your gallbladder to fail, your kidneys to fail and all these different things that you, but people don't hear that because all they do is they see the images. And so I think what is exciting for this opportunity is because I do believe that moms are the heroes of our present and future. We are the guardians of the public health for sure, that we need to be aware and we need to trust our bodies and we need to understand why we need to trust our bodies. And so, you know, I'll talk about it for as long as you want, <laughs> because it matters. That's great. Thank you, Dr. Plasker. I, I actually want to ask um, Kelly, you, you, Kelly Ryers, Ryerson, glyphosate girl, Kelly, you found out that you were reacting to something and you were having gut issues can, can you tell us what you found out and how you healed yourself? I mean, since I've met you, you've been nothing but boisterous and healthy and all of that, but I knew it wasn't always like that. How did you oh. heal yourself? Yeah, so I was sort of a textbook case of uh, a woman after having children, having all kinds of strange symptoms that seemed not related. I had eyesight issues and neuropathy and um, like anxiety, depression, stomach issues, just the gamut. And so, you know, doctors sent me to a various group of specialists that, of course, 
we're looking at one, one system as opposed to another, as opposed to another, not all together. And at this point I was fully bought into Western medicine. So I didn't question it. This was like at Stanford and that, you know, at Stanford, they must know. Right. Um, and finally, uh, they told one doctor actually said that she wouldn't work with me unless I went to see a psychiatrist, um, because it was seeming like I'm crazy. So I went to the psychiatrist and at that point I was on so many medications too, because I was like trying anything just to have a normal life and have energy. Um, and the psychiatrist happened to have, he was not a functional or like integrated psychiatrist, but he happened to have intake blood work that had a vitamin panel on it. And when that came back and I was super malnourished, like tremendously malnourished, and I had scurvy and like very, very, and all kinds of third world things. Um, and when I, and then I finally met a new doctor, she said, try going off gluten. Um, and so I did, and I slowly started to get better. And then that sort of led me down, down the path of understanding, okay, so what is it that's in our grain that might be causing this issue? And, and now I'm named glyphosate girl. So that's <laughs> sort of like the long path there. But since I figured out like to change my diet, eat as organically as possible and be supplementing with some probiotics, which I still do today and taking the right multivitamins. I mean, I just, it's amazing the ability to heal. It's not something I ever would have dreamt of. I mean, I couldn't walk at a time. And once you started going off gluten, how long before you felt uh, improvements? So I felt improvements, you know, probably two weeks later, I started yeah. thinking oh, that feels a little bit better. Yeah. By a month, I thought I'd do a little challenge and got super, super tired and teary, uh, like a month in. <laughs> I mean, when I, when I tried it again, and I was like, okay, I, I'm not going to do that gluten challenge anymore. I'm just off. Yeah. yeah. Body right. And so for those that don't know, um, uh, glyphosate is often sprayed on wheat as a drying agent, uh, especially in Northern territories. So most people, Dr. Zach Bush says that 80% of the gluten intolerances are not actually to gluten. They are to glyphosate. Glyphosate is the chemical ingredient in Roundup. So I wouldn't even call it an allergy. It's just a reaction, <laughs> which most yeah. people are probably happening, having, they just don't really notice it because they're not in tune with their body. But as you cleanse your body out and as you do more chiropractic work and you just get more in tune with your body, you notice what mm -hmm. your, your, the reactions that your body is having to food. So thank you for, for sharing that. There's all and, kinds of things that we can do. Mm -hmm. And what you were just talking about, Dr. Plasker, about like just when you realize that your body has the power to heal itself, it's so mind blowing after you've been so committed to this other paradigm, it's mind blowing. It seems like too good to be true after all you've been through, you know? Yeah. I think, I think what you just said, uh, the di different paradigms, one of my favorite quotes is by Stephen Covey who wrote the seven habits of highly effective people. He talked two things, begin with the end in mind, which is always important. I think, especially when it comes to your health, especially if you knew you were going to live to 100 or 80, 90, 100, how would you live differently so that you didn't get that crippled, broken alone? That's a really important premise of what we talk about, about and what we teach. But the other thing that he said that I really think makes a difference, he says that some people climb the ladder of success, they get to the top. And then he said that every step you take in the wrong direction takes you to the wrong place faster. And we have an entire healthcare system in the wrong paradigm with the ladder leaning against the wrong wall. And we're being bought, our brains are being bought that it's the only way and it's the right way because our brains are being bought. And you know what's been interesting and what I want everybody to realize here is that if you understand that the paradigm shift that we're talking about here is such an important premise to make that change that you realize that the body is self-healing and self-regulating. And we have an, a principle that we talk about. It's called the interference principle. We've written about it. We have articles about it. We have, a, I think, a, like an hour video, 100 Year Lifestyle YouTube channel on it. And the basic premise of you have within you an innate intelligence that from the moment of conception, when two cells came together to form 80 quadrillion cells, I still don't know who counts those cells, but 80 quadrillion cells forms a human being that then grows through childhood, puberty, into an adult, and the blueprint to live to 80, 90, 100 years healthy was all present from the moment of conception. And then 
So the question then becomes is, so then why do people get sick and why do people break down? And the answer is interference. And this premise of the body self-healing, self-regulating, what gets in the way of the expression of health? And the answer is interference. And the interferences are, there are three types of interference that we talk about. There's nerve interference, which can happen in the spine and nervous system and the brain. That's things that we deal with on a regular basis. We clear that out. Then there's environmental interference, which Kelly, you were just talking about that glyphosate, chemicals in the environment. That's environmental interference. That gets in the way of the body expressing its innate potential to function at a high level for a lifetime. And then there's lifestyle interference, the things that we do, the bad habits that we have, the bad food habits, the bad eating habits, the bad sitting habits, the bad thought habits that we have that get in the way of the full expression of life. So rather than having interference affect us all around us internally, trauma, physical trauma, mental trauma, chemical trauma, environmental, all these different things, rather than treat the symptoms of that interference with drugs, why not get to the cause and be aware of those interferences and keep them out of your life as a part of a lifestyle? Mm -hmm. And when you think that way and you act that way and you create habits around those, that principle, the world looks completely different because then you realize that the drugs that were being sold, the pharmaceutical industry selling us all these different drugs with all side effects, which it's interesting. People will say to our patients, will tell us all the time and say, well, you know, I've been taking this drug for a long time and I haven't had those side effects. Yeah, but hang on one second. What we have to understand is the physiological changes that our body goes through to react to those medications, those environmental factors that cause those side effects, for example, those changes are happening in us, feel the symptoms or the side effect or not. But at some point we will when our body gives out. Because if you've ever studied chemistry, not to get too technical here, but simple experiment. Uh, there was a, a experiment called titration. You've seen this when you, if you've ever watched them test pool water where you have a dropper with a chemical and you have a, a glass with another chemical and you drop, 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 one into the other, nothing happens. Then you drop, 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 nothing happens. Drop, 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 nothing happens. Then one last drop and it changes color. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So that, that chemistry experiment is called titration. In a laboratory environment where you have a fixed amount of chemical, where you know what kind of chemical it is, and then you have a fixed amount concentration in the dropper, you can measure. Well, that's gonna take a hundred drops to change color. But in a human laboratory with the constant exposure to environmental factors and chemistry, you don't know what that number is. You don't know when it's gonna change to feel the side effect or to have, for example, to have your liver give out or to have your kidneys give out or to have your heart give out. We don't know what that is. So to have a lifestyle that is drug oriented, treat the symptom oriented is kind of scary, especially if you know you're gonna live maybe to 70, 80, 90, 100 years old because none of these drugs were tested for that. So to have the premise of my body is self-healing, it is self-regulating and how, would I, how do I keep that functioning at a very high level for a lifetime? It's kind of exciting shift because you block out the world, you're confident, you're aware, hey, I don't feel well, my body's out of balance, I need to bring it back into balance. And you can make choices centered around that rather than just covering up symptoms with drugs and keep on going. Right, and, and by block out the world, you mean like the, the commentary of a doctor that says you have to be on these 12 different medications and, and food doesn't matter and your lifestyle doesn't matter, like that type of, and you shouldn't go to a chiropractor, right? that type of conversation, that type of paradigm. And then you, you look towards yourself. And what, what I'm also hearing is that the, the nerve um, interference, the environmental in interference and the lifestyle interference, all three of those are important. I mean, you could be, you could be exercising pretty well and eating organic, but if you don't go at a chiropractor and you've got something that's off from your birth, right? Or a car accident that you were in, you may not heal your body the way that you are your body's able to heal right or you could be going to a chiropractor and exercising a lot but eating crap food and you still would have that interference and not heal the way that you're supposed to heal is do you, you you're saying you need to address all three is that correct yes because they interact with each other also so if you have if you have uh, a poor lifestyle choices that's calling it to, causing interference in the way that you're by you're sitting too much you're hunched over uh and you 
so yes, maybe that's causing the sitting is causing you to have discomfort, pain, hunchback, et cetera, but it's affecting the spine, which can put pressure on the nerves, which can also cause increases in problems. It can speed up the generation, which could also make you more sensitive to your environment. If you have, you know, we have people that come in that have allergies, and I agree with what you, you both were saying earlier. Uh, people think they have allergies and they blame it on the flowers and the trees. And it's not the flowers and the trees. It's the chemicals on the flowers and the trees. Mm -hmm. That is the problem. Mm -hmm. And allergies have skyrocketed as a result of all the chemistry. So you have this environmental interference, putting extra stress on the body. And if you have any nerve pressure at all in your body, where there's not efficient communication up and down, it's affecting your body chemistry. It alters your body's immune response then your body can not react properly. It can overreact. It can underreact depending on the kind of pressure on the nerve, which can then in turn affect your lifestyle because then you can't go outside and you're afraid to go outside. All of these things are related. So if you understand these three elements of interference and you address them as a part of a lifestyle, not like I'm going to treat the interference, but I'm just going to live interference free. Mm -hmm. Both are important. Like if you're already having problems, yes, you have to address the interference. Some of these interferences are addictions. Some of these medications are addictions. Some of these lifestyle habits are addictions. And to have the awareness of this is huge. And the self-awareness, and I think what, why these calls are so important and the work that you're doing is so important, you're bringing so much awareness to these realities. And on an individual level, you and your family can take control by just recognizing, identifying these interferences, which by the way, it's not rocket scientists. If you're eating foods that's constantly treated by chemicals, it's not good. If you're uh, in an environment that's got all kinds of chemicals in the environment, that's not good. If you have stress in your environment or you're reacting to things in a stressful way and you're mentally triggering yourself to react to things, these are not healthy things. And so we always say, that listen, you know the things, because really the 100 year lifestyle is about change. It's about changing your life. And you know the things that you need to change. I don't have to tell you what they are. You've been thinking about them, some of you for decades, things that yeah. you know you need to change. So uh, the bad news is it's not going away unless you make the changes you know you need to make. And there's no doctor that's going to do it for you. You have to do it. I mean, my family, we have, I have not been to a medical doctor since I was a, a kid at the pediatrician's office. That's just not my paradigm. I just don't go, I'm 58 years old. I'm not on any medication. And the only problem I have is that I don't have any hair and that's it. <laughs> Other than that, and I don't mind it, but I'm just saying the point is my family, we didn't grow up going to pediatricians. We just did it. We lived by this principle of the body's self-healing, self-regulating. My kids have never had a shot. Tried to give in a freak out moment, my oldest son, when he was four years old, uh, a uh, Benadryl because he was having some kind of reaction to something and he must be his father's son because he spit it out. He would have nothing to do with it. But we just, we just live this way and we're really healthy and we're smart. We're not stupid people. We're not ignorant people. We're intelligent people. We have a great compass. And I think one thing that you're doing Zen with Moms Across America, which we feel very important about is we have a strong compass. We are anchored in the reality of the beliefs that we live and we yeah. have the evidence mm -hmm. and the evidence is in the lives that we change and the, and the results that we have in the families that we work with. So you shouldn't be afraid of it. You should take it on. You should explore it. You should have fun with it. And then your BS meter very quickly is going to get super duper duper high tech. And you're going to love that because yes. then when all this stuff that's coming out about, you know, magnets and, new types of mRNA vaccines and your BS meter is going to be like shock waves in your system like crazy and you won't buy into it and you won't care that people are criticizing you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That confidence and that confidence comes from being inquisitive and not being afraid to go down a rabbit hole or to do research and check sources and double check and, you know, talk to scientists and doctors and all that, which our moms are really experienced in doing. I mean, the moms that I have spoken after in, in conferences, you know, autism one and things like that, I've been more intimidated to speak after some of the moms than the, the doctors and scientists with, you know, all kinds of degrees because they know their stuff. 
So, um, so with that, I want to ask if anybody has any questions, you know, in, in the world of there's no stupid questions and we're all just trying to figure stuff out, you know, do you have a tough health issue? Do you, is there something that's going on with you? anne has got a question. You just want to say that this is just for educational purposes. This is not medical advice, you know, consider all options, right? Okay. So just a conversation from you. So, thank you. so hey, Dr. P, um, I can hey, consider myself the, one of the healthiest 63 year olds I know out in the garden all day long, eat a plant-based diet, all organic, grow a lot of my own food. And at the end of May, uh, I started having some pain in my side. And after on the third day, I got so bad, I ended up in urgent care. And I ended up having to drive myself from urgent care to the hospital to have my gallbladder taken out. Um, but because I was kicked in the stomach by a horse in 1984, there was a lot of scar tissue, which led to me having another emergency procedure to have a stent put in, which I'm not going to have taken out until the, the middle of July. Where, where is the stent? It goes from my liver down through my stomach into my small intestine. Okay. To redirect the bile. I have been having off. I've been getting, I've been ha having a horrible time. Um, I've been having to change my sheets almost every day because of the night sweats. I've been, it's just, I mean, today I feel great. So, you know, but I'm getting yelled at by all my friends that I need to take it easy, but I'm not a person who likes to take it easy. So um, I just, you know, I'm just not well, you've sure. had a fever. You've had a fever for uh, days now, and I you've had a not. Fever and they did yeah. labs, and I just got them back. They did did four different cultures. No, no infection. So you know, I just don't feel like in the allopathic medical world that I'm getting answers that I need. They want me to go in for another CAT scan because I'm worried now that the stint's getting clogged up or something. I'm afraid to eat. I've lost almost twenty pounds. Oh. Okay. So uh, your question specifically is, what do you do? Where do you go? Well, I feel like my body betrayed me from thinking everything was fine to all of a sudden something going from fine to not fine. And so okay. I don't even know if I have a question. I, I'm well, hang on a second. Coming from the thinking of your your body has an ability to innately heal, wouldn't you want to shift that thinking, Dr. Plasker, about her body betraying her? Wouldn't you have something to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that your body necessarily betrayed you. Maybe there was, like you said, you had scar tissue there before. When when did the when did you get kicked by the horse? 1984. I got both hooves in my stomach, so basically I was Humpty Dumpty, and they had to put me back together again. Okay. And so you're, you were kicked in the stomach. You had scar tissue around the gallbladder. Well, yeah, where they did the surgery, they couldn't do the surgery exactly the way they wanted to because of the scar tissue, which is why I ended up needing a stent because I was leaking bile everywhere. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, a couple of things, not examining you and not knowing all the things that are going on. Let's just maybe look at the way we're thinking about this. Okay. So first of all, if you got kicked in the stomach by a horse that left hoof prints in your gut, probably, what's that? I didn't break a rib. Okay. There you go. So that is a pretty intense trauma. It's a physical trauma that happened in the 80s, you said? 84. 84, where, so it's almost 40 years ago. So there are people that have injuries like that, traumas like that, that they have their gallbladder removed immediately. There are people that have appendix issues from things like that. They have people that have liver uh, excisions as a result of things like that. I mean, that is a pretty intense trauma. I know people that have, been kicked by horses that, I mean, horses are strong, strong animals. And so maybe, just maybe, the healing capacity of your body kept you from needing something for 37 years that you might have needed 30 years ago. 
Uh, I'm going to give you a different example. And so I'm not saying that it did the right thing. Like I'll give you, I mean, or that it's not bad what happened to you, but I'm gonna give you another example. And we use, uh, we have a poster in our, uh, that a lot of our hundred year lifestyle affiliate doctors have in their offices. It's three x-rays. It's of uh, somebody that's had good alignment, all in the same age in their fifties. One has no degeneration. They've been getting adjusted lifestyle care for 50 years years. The middle one just has a little bit of degeneration in the area because they've had crisis care. They go in and get the, they get it adjusted and that just that area is deteriorated, but not the whole spine. And then you have somebody that has severe degeneration and they're all the same age. Now, why is it relevant to what you're saying? The degeneration that happens in a situation like that, if it's neglected and the spine is neglected, you say, well, my body betrayed me. You could say, because it's got all this calcium buildup. No, your body in that situation tries to protect you by laying down calcium where it's supposed to be or where it's not supposed to be because it's not aligned properly. So the body lays down calcium, it changes the positioning, it makes it more solid because it says innately, and I haven't gone in and read the body's mind, but this is what I'm guessing that it's doing after 35 years. It's saying, listen, this is a bad situation. We need to protect it so you can live because you've had some kind of trauma, we need to protect you so you can have a life. Maybe just maybe without seeing your x-rays, your MRIs, CAT scans or whatever was taken, maybe the scar tissue formed around your gallbladder because it needed to protect the gallbladder because of the type of injury that you had. Now, what could you have done all along the way? Plant-based diet, fantastic. Good nerve supply, making sure the nerve supply between your spine and your gallbladder was working the way that it was supposed to. Maybe some deep tissue type of massage, Reiki work, things like that could have, that could have broken up scar tissue in your abdomen. Like maybe these were things that could have been done to remove interference. But I don't know necessarily that your, your body betrayed you, but now here you are in a new place. So we can't go backwards. We can't feel guilt or frustration about it. Don't be mad at your body. It's still on your side. So now that you had this surgery, what can you do to make sure that your body's working the way that it's supposed to? Well, if you lose your gallbladder, your body's going to need help digesting fats. So you need to supplement your diet to support di the digestion of fats. You need to really keep your diet super duper clean. You need to do some stretching on a regular basis, maybe find somebody that understands how to do deep tissue massage in areas around surgical incisions, things like that, to break up any adhesions or any, inter any interference. But your body's ability to, ad to adapt is what's keeping you going. Look at the things that you're doing and not doing and make it a priority to remove interferences, to support your body functioning at the highest level. And now that your gallbladder has been removed, Maybe you, you might need a medication to help you digest fats, same as it was before, but you have to be willing to experiment. You have to be thoughtful. You have to read, you have to ask good questions. Maybe go to a functional medicine person that could do some blood tests that can support you very specific nutritionally uh, to support you in the digestion of fats based on your body chemistry. But I wouldn't give up on your body's ability to heal and function and removing this interference I would actually double down on it, especially now, to be honest with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I think the um, shifting your thinking from your body, betraying into your body is like on your side and heal. Like even what, the one thing I learned from my chiropractor is that when you feel pain, that's your body's way of telling you, hey, I need attention. The pain is not bad. The fever is not bad. That's your body's way. The rash, my kids had a rash. I thought, oh, we got to slap our cream on it, right? And make it go away. The rash is bad. The bash, No, the but rash is the gut's way of telling you that there's inflammation in the gut and it comes out in splotchy parts on your face, right? Or your arms. So your body is communicating with you and your body's amazing and miraculous. And, and we want you to heal yourself by thinking positively. And I know where you're, I know where you are psychologically. It's, I just remember feeling super betrayed. I felt separate from my body. I think that's only natural if you are, you know, struggling for a duration of time, but truly you are so strong. You, I, thank goodness you've been treating your body the way that you have been because now it has the tools to repair. Yeah. And I, and, and I, and I, and I agree with you, uh, Kelly. And, and what I also want to say is that the mindset of this, it takes 
the only reason it takes a super duper strong mindset to think this way, it's not because it's not natural, is because everything else in the world is telling us something else. Mm -hmm. We are being bombarded with misinformation and we are being sold products that have never been tested long-term that they tell us so out front how bad they are for us that we don't even hear it anymore because we just see what they're telling us the product does. So I'm not saying that there's never a time. I mean, you may find that there is a medication now and that you've lost the gallbladder or that you had, that is that really works for you, that you really need right now, that you didn't need before. But if you didn't have a good, strong body, then you wouldn't, your body wouldn't even be able to assimilate that. So you just want to make sure that you're careful that you don't have one medication lead to another, which leads to another, which leads to another, because you're just treating symptoms. You should be patient. I'll tell you one thing that I have learned with healing, which is <laughs> a lot of people don't like this word, but patience, time, you have to be a little patient. The problem is, is that many of us, when we get to this point to have this conversation, we're all if I were to go on any kind of medication, it would be more of a natural digestive enzyme or something. But Right. And where do you live in? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. I, I tell you what, I have a very good friend who's a Dean Shepard. I told well, you, I'm, I'm sorry that you got sick. I could tell you that I literally just had some text messages with Dean. He's a health freedom warrior. Um, he's been in practice for 30 years like I have. Um, he's a smart guy. And he is very talented at what he does. I would completely trust him. Okay. Uh, and he'll tell you if he can help you or not. So I will look him up. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Thank you, Anne. Thank you for sharing, Anne. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Plasker, I, I, you might know my father, Jack Voyevich. He went to life. Oh, wow. Yes, I don't know. I was mentioning I was going on the call tonight and I mentioned Dr. Plasker and he said, I know the name. It sounds familiar. Very cool. When did he graduate? Oh, good question. He was born in 69. Okay. Graduated. So he's quite a bit younger than I am. <laughs> well, then maybe <laughs> see at the school. That would make sense. Definitely. Uh -huh. Where does he practice? Tom's River, New Jersey. And he's still oh, okay. Practice. Yep. Yep. So I've, I'm a chiropractor's baby and I've been getting adjusted ever since I came out the womb. Um, so I'm in a similar situation to you and your children. Um, I've always kind of been a part of this life. So I was extremely lucky. Um, and chiropractors happen to be the best dads, I will say. <laughs> well, I'm sure that uh, my kids, I don't know if they feel that way, but they sure showed up on Father's Day yesterday. <laughs> yes, yes, I hope you had a good Father's Day. I did, yes. Yeah, Thank that's you. right. Happy belated Father's Day. We, we you. did a post about you. I don't know if you saw it on Facebook. We, we put, did a post for you. Um, thank you. Thank you, you and all fathers for, the, especially the fathers that support our well-being. Very, you know, we really feel supported and appreciate everything you do. So, well, Riley, you know, I Riley think... would, you, would you consider that your dad was like your primary, like a chiropractor was your primary care physician? Oh, 100%. I don't even, I don't remember the last time I had to go to a doctor. I think I was it like fourth grade um, and not only my primary care physician like all of my friends um, all of our family members like anytime anyone has any sort of ailment it's just like text Riley text my dad what do you think what's going on and he's very honest he's not a type of person to say don't go to the hospital or don't do this treatment like he he just has this kind of intrinsic knowing of what the body can handle for itself you know like when I grew up we had BJ Palmer hanging on our wall. We had like a qu quotes. And so he always um, supports innate intelligence. And um, he always encourages my friends to get uh, adjusted. He has a very hands-on like crack method. Um, and a lot of people are kind of hesitant to do that at first. So it takes a little coaxing a little bit to get my friends involved. But once they do it and they get it over with them, um, they love it. And they're like, wow, I feel so good. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing and it is a weird situation. I know the whole vaccine thing growing up, it's always one of those subjects where we were taught sort of just not to bring it up. 
um, unless someone kind of mentions it. So it's weird to be in this world. So I'm with you. Now we've all been kind of thrust into the situation where everyone's talking about it every two seconds. And we're like, <laughs> I had a conversation with my boss for the first time. He took it well. Um, so that that is good. Um, uh, I'm just grateful to have these conversations. This is one of the first, I video edit. So I've video edited for you before, but I've never actually been on the call. So I'm happy I got to meet you tonight. Well, I'm happy to meet you too. And you know, what's interesting, Riley, is that I, I remember my kids when they would go to school and people would find out that they weren't artificially immunized, we call it. We wouldn't even say vaccinated. We say artificially immunized. And, and they, would, they would feel like aliens sometimes. And when Jacob, my oldest, when he went to decide to become a chiropractor and he went to Life University, um, he went to that Life Leadership Weekend. That oh, same that's Monday. amazing. Yeah, it's great. And uh, I'm about to do my 40th Friday night in a row coming up uh, in, a, in next month. But it's the same thing that, Zen, that you brought your family to that same event. Well, Jacob was there. And after that, he said, you know, he said, people came up to me and they said, so Jacob, you're, you're a Cairo kid. And he said, yeah. And they asked him, so were you vaccinated? And he said, no. And their reaction was like, wow, Ooh, <laughs> really? Because in the rest of the world, he's like a crazy alien. His parents are yes. lunatics. Right. But the reality of it is, is more and more people like you are stepping up. And I got to tell you, speaking up, it's so important. Your voice highly matters more than ever that letting people know that they could grow up this way, that they're not aliens. They're actually have the strongest immune yes. systems in the world. Uh, and uh, so I, I appreciate that you're on this call speaking out. It's great. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, we will keep going. It's all about just like one conversation at a time and coming from a place of love and understanding and starting with what you have in common rather than what separates us all. So hopefully we can, every day we get closer to understanding with our peers and our loved ones. You're hired. <laughs> yes. You're muted, Zen. You're muted. That was beautifully said. I don't think any of us could have said that any better. That was just wonderful. Thank you, Riley. You're going to have to edit yourself in <laughs> to the video <laughs> that I put out there. <laughs> nice. So that was great. Um, and did you have any other questions for Dr. Dr. Plasker? Or just yeah, the only, I remember on one of the calls, you had said something about even the pressure of a dime um, throwing off the entire nervous system on the spine. And I've always heard the word subluxation but I still don't really know if I understand it. And I would love to hear kind of like a different version of how my father would describe it. Um, Cause I still don't really understand like what, what is a subluxation? Um, how do we get one? And what are you doing to get, to get rid of that subluxation? I think that would be helpful sort of. Okay, great. Well, a subluxation, a vertebral subluxation is when there are injuries to the spine, misalignments to the spine, dysfunctions of the spine that cause interference to the function of the nervous system that affects the body's ability to function normally, basically. And so there are different components to subluxation, fancy words like uh, spinal kinesiopathology, neuropathophysiology, Basically, all these fancy words mean is that the body, the mechanics of the spine is not proper and it's causing interference to the communication between the brain and the body. Uh, we call it your body's natural IT system. Your nervous system controls and coordinates the function of every cell, tissue, and organ of the body. And so that communication pathway must be clear. And when it's interfered with, and that interference can happen in the spine, when it happens in the spine, it's called a vertebral subluxation. It can happen in the brain. It could happen in the brain stem. Uh, it could happen because of the cause, like you asked what can cause it. Uh, interference is what causes it. It can mm -hmm. be caused by physical uh, interference, by environmental interference, by lifestyle interference. It can be caused by trauma, uh, mental, chemical, physical trauma. It can be caused by stress. Uh, and it can be caused by the birth process. The birth process is very traumatic to the spine, the pulling and twisting on the neck during process. Mm -hmm. So if anybody knows somebody that's been born, they should probably get their spine and nervous system checked. Uh, and so to go back to your 
quote of the research that was done by the University of Colorado years ago, the weight of a dime can reduce depression. Uh, we also know through research that nerve compression can exist without pain. So you have it and not feel it because the nerve root is only partial of the nerve part. 7%, I believe, of the nerve root is sensory. The rest is motor, uh, organic function. So only 7% is sensory. So that's why you can have it and not feel it. That's such an important point mm -hmm. because we're used to saying, oh, I need to treat the symptom. Well, that's it's never been about treating symptoms in my house, probably never in your house also. Mm -hmm. uh, we also know that stretching a nerve, 6%, Darva can reduce the nutrition going to a, going to through that nerve, and so that also affects the way the body functions. Uh, there were studies done way back 2000, excuse me, like 1918, I think it was done. The Windsor autopsies were done, where um, where they found that they did autopsies on I think it was like 118 corpses, and they traced back the organ that was the cause of death. And they traced the nerve back to the spine and they found in like 90% of the cases that the area that in the spine that had the most degeneration was the nerve supply that was going to the area that was the cause of death. So wow. we know and we've known that nerve compression, uh, nerve interference, miscommunication between the brain and the body affects the way that the body function and over time, can lead to all kinds of, we call it dis-ease, which then in turn leads to disease. If you wanna geek out on this, I did a video on it. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's called the Interference Principle. I think this list on it, the Interference Principle, play, Interference Principle Playlist, it's an hour long. Uh, and it goes through all of these different things. We go through nerve interference, lifestyle interference, uh, environmental interference, we talk about uh, um, cumulative interference, uh, severe massive interference, lethal interference, how it happens. And uh, so have at it if you want to get scientific and philosoph philosophical and strengthen your convictions. Uh, it's a great hour to spend. Nice. Did I answer your question, by the way? Yes, yes, definitely. And I, I like like the way you're talking about it, because I think it's so important for people to understand that chiropractic is not some hocus pocus uh, sort of pseudoscience that it actually has super real principles and then it really leads back to the spine which is a very real thing I think a lot of my friends get the impression that it's like a quack sort of thing and they don't really understand it so it's okay so let me can I address that quack thing for just a second yeah, please um, is that okay to address this Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. okay so when I was in school way back 1982 to 1985 uh, way before you were born Riley um, and so in 1982 to 1985, 1986, if you remember from the 1986, the act, the documentary, that's when the law was passed to make, take away liability from the drug company. So they got a free pass basically. Well, from 1982 to 1985, our profession at the same time, the chiropractic industry had been under attack for more than a decade by the AMA through a strategic plan that the AMA had to chiropractic profession wow. for no other reason that we chose not to be a part of medicine. Our industry made a conscious decision. We are not going to be a part of medicine. And they said, well, we'll show you. And they had all out attack, smear campaigns, quackery. I'm proud to say that very short in my career, within five years, I was on the quack watch list because I was an outspoken <laughs> young chiropractor. It was a badge of honor back then. It's even more <laughs> badge of honor today, I can tell you right now. But what happened was, is that uh, it went, we were being targeted because we were also, we chose not to be a part of medicine and we also question this mandatory, you know, decrease in liability, mandatory vaccines that were going on, the push for mandate. And we were, we were like a thorn in the AMA side right. at the time. So we ended up, a couple of chiropractors got together, Dr. Chester Wilk, um, Dr., uh, an attorney, McAndrews, a couple of other chiropractors, and they sued the AMA. And that lawsuit went on for 12 years. It was settled in 1989, I believe it was. I may get my dates wrong by a year or two. Forgive me for that. But we went all the way to the Supreme Court and we won. We won in, in local court, state court. So then, and then we won in the United States Supreme Court. 
And the judge, when they, the judge came down and handed the sentence to the AMA, which was hundreds of millions of dollars, which unfortunately the doctor said, no, don't give it to us. You put it towards a positive campaign for chiropractic. <laughs> they should have taken the money and started their own campaign because the AMA did not follow through on their promise. Didn't, to, wait, didn't uh, somebody from the AMA actually have issues that ended up going to a chiropractor and was cured? Because I was- uh, Yes, probably many of them. Yes, but it never got the publicity. It never got $400 million of publicity, I can tell you that. But here, here's the, what the judge said that I think was really important. The judge said, all right, we give the victory to the chiropractors, but your smear campaign is going to harm the chiropractic industry and their communities and the public for decades. Because here we are, we're still using that word where people don't even realize the foundation of that word, where it came from. Yes, right. And so what's important that we understand is that this is why we have to have these conversations. This is why I am always 100% of the time just about game for these types of conversations because we have to take our minds back and we have to trust our body's ability to heal itself. And I'm gonna go out on the limb to say that today more than ever, sadly, that the medical profession is probably the most lost, dysfunctional, useless profession on the planet, except for in some cases, in where people need surgery in times of emergency situations for life-saving situations. And you say, Dr. Plaskin, now you've really lost your mind. I liked you up until this one moment, but listen to me. These people, they know there's no testing on all of these vaccines. The pediatricians, they know what's going on and they're not speaking out. They have become pharma puppets. All of their education comes from this pharmaceutical industry. They are. Literally, they are just extensions of the pharmaceutical agenda. That's all that they are. It's yeah, not that, and I would go out on a limb to say that they are experts on all the wrong things when it comes to health. They may be great at defining a disease and cutting it in to cause you to go into remission, which has nothing to do with health. It just means that you're in remission. And so for you as an individual, you have got to take your health into your hands. You have got to do your health because treating disease and treating symptoms and being healthy and making healthy choices are two completely different ladders circling back to the first quotes that I had when we started this call that using the Stephen Covey quotes, quotes of climbing the ladder and realizing the ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. Oh, we all know you and Stephen Barrett are best buds. You know Stephen Barrett. Look at that. Now you're going to go tell on me. Well, I've been I've been uh, reading about him for years, and the funny thing was, I just put your name into the website, and uh, Riley will be interested to know that one of the articles came up: how chiropractic sub subluxation theory threatens public health. <laughs> oh my God! Of course. Oh, because you're a threat to public health, Doctor Plasker, because you want people to heal themselves. Exactly. You know. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm getting I'm getting out of this that in order to live interference free, we need to cause an interference to the status quo. <laughs> yes. And, and that is why they call chiropractors quacks, or they did, you know, because they don't like that you're interfering with the status quo. Well, um yeah. So are you so I I have a question from uh uh Frankie, but uh, please leave, let's leave a little bit of time. I have a question too, but a personal question too. Um, so Frankie wants to know how would Medicare for all affect chiropractic care? Have you had any sort of, you know, feelings, I mean, any uh, word from anybody about that and has Congress addressed this? Has there been any talk about how Medicare for all would affect chiropractic? Well, Medicare, I believe covers 24 to 26 chiropractic visits a year. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's two visits a month. So the thing is, is that I don't, it's hard for me to say the problem that I see with Medicare is that they, it's still in a model of symptomatic treatment. So I, I don't really, I don't really know. I don't know. Okay. 
Yeah. It's I'm, like it's kind of not your thing because you're outside of that. You're in a different. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of socialized medicine in any way, shape or form. I think that anything you put in the government's hands is going to have a, a level of control that uh, you may like at the beginning and hate at the end. Um, and so I would say, uh, especially this government's hands, there, uh, there yes. might be other governments like in other countries that might be a little bit more balanced about it. But this government's hands uh, is particularly corrupt. Yeah, I think so, that uh, I, listen, I think that uh, the, that we as the people, if we can get more and more and more people thinking this way, then we will move the needle. Uh, and so uh, if that happens, then Medicare for all might be a good idea. But now the way that it is and who's running the show, uh, I, I do not think it would be a good idea. I think uh, what you what you love today would be gone tomorrow. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, quick, quickly, um, so I've been told I have Borrelia. I've, I've had Epstein-Barr virus for a, a long time. I don't know if it's one or the other, or I don't know what it is, but um, I'm having nerve issues, you know, neuropathy and arthritis and, and hot flashes and, you know, extreme fatigue, all that stuff. I've been doing a, a vegan, like raw cleanse for about two weeks now. Very, very hard, <laughs> but mostly like I'd say 95% raw and, um, and I feel better The neuropathy is almost gone, but I'm guessing that the, the arthritis stuff and the hot flashes and all that is all nerve related. So I'm wondering if I should up my visits to the chiropractor, like would, could that help nerve issues or is this like a bacterial thing? What's your opinion about that? Some people, you know, like some people don't believe it's Lyme Lyme. They just think it's Epstein-Barr and, you know, old maybe viruses and all that stuff. But I don't know, what's your take on all that? Well, I'm define long. a long time. You said you've had it for a long time. I've had, I've had Epstein-Barr since my twenties, late twenties on and off, okay. it's come back. I've been tested and they're like, oh, your levels are elevated when I'm particularly fatigued, right? And it's ha there happened during times of like great stress and which I've had plenty of <laughs> still recently. So, um, so that could be it or it could be the Borrelia, you know, I don't know. I haven't gotten an official, you know, Lyme test. I just feel nerve, pro like the neuropathy in my legs and feet has been really annoying. Okay, so, uh, so what I would say is in a situation like that, if you were my patient, what I would say to you is I would say, you know what? Um, well, two things, let's start, I'm gonna back up one second. Concept, the intensity of your care, mm -hmm. lifestyle care as we call it, should depend on the intensity of your lifestyle and the underlying conditions in your spine and nervous system. So if you have uh, a history of, neuropathies that get brought on by stress, that maybe something happened, maybe it was a reaction to a vaccine when you were younger that you didn't know about that lay dormant for a while. Maybe it was uh, a stress exposure that caused some damage to your adrenal glands, Wh whatever it could have been way back. Well, I, I also got kicked by a horse, but it was in the back when I was in oh. horse camp, nine years old. I knocked a pole out of, the, out of the fence and I was unconscious for three days and they didn't tell anybody. So, um, and recently I've been having back pain. So I'm just wondering if that's like kind of resurfacing, you know, stuff like that, you know? So, yeah. All right. So I, I would see you more personally and I would okay. see you close together and not okay. space it out. I would get intense about it mm -hmm. and then I would space it out. And then I would try to figure out, okay, what is the appropriate based on the underlying condition of the health of your spine and nervous system? It's not me. It's not like, a, it's like, this is what I want you to do. Cause I'm the doctor. It's like, okay, you have a body and your body needs help. And right. your body has a certain level of stress. It's got had injuries. You've had traumas. Yeah. Those traumas, uh, one of my mentors, Alex Cox, uh, used to say, and I love this, he said, trauma is recorded in the disc. So in the disc of the spine and the nervous system and the motor unit of the spinal system. So whatever one is injured, the trauma is recorded there. It knows it becomes protective. It, uh, and so I think, I think if you have those things going on, I would step up the intensity. I would try to maybe ask uh, Dr. Cam to change the style if need be, maybe not, maybe just the frequency needs, needs to increase a little bit. And listen, if you've had it since your twenties, I know that was only 10 years ago, but you've also <laughs> been, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, just a short period of time that you have really been getting some consistent care. 
Right. So I think yeah. you need to be patient and adjust your intensity of care according to what your body is saying that it needs right now. Okay. That's a, that's a great response. I appreciate it. Yeah. And Frankie's saying olive leaf extract, which I'm taking. Yes. Help with Epstein-Barr. Taking a bunch of herbs, you no know, cat's claw and berberine. And um, I'm doing this raw diet. So I'm, I'm confident, like my first thought in my head is, oh no, I am not doing a year of antibiotics. That's just not going to happen with me. Like I am <laughs> firm about that. People keep telling me, oh, that's the only way. And that's what you're going to do. But I'm, I'm not going to destroy my immune system that way. But I also, I want to admit that when you say the word trauma, there is something in me that resists that so much <clears throat> because I consider myself a strong woman and I do not want to admit that I've ever had any trauma. Like things could happen to me, but no, nah, that's not trauma and it's not going to have long life uh, effects. And so I have to admit that like, it's, it's taken something. Somebody recently told me you're not going to heal unless you deal with emotional trauma. So I went to a hypnotherapist and I had this amazing session releasing all this stuff from when I got kicked in the back and, you know, all these emotional things that happened to me. And that was really freeing. So I think there's some, there's, there's a lot to be said about just admitting the reality of some stuff that has happened to you. Like when you called what happened to Anne trauma, I was like, yeah, that is trauma. And then I was like, well, wait a second. Why can't I admit what happened to me was trauma? <laughs> you know what I mean? How yeah, come like, so, so, so you got to so accept Zen, the reality of some things, you know? Yeah. So Zen, just for clarification. Yeah. You've had trauma. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, but I'm superwoman. <laughs> what? <laughs> being, wait, being kicked in the back by a horse and being knocked unconscious for how many days? Three days. Yeah, that would definitely qualify in the dictionary of trauma. That would be, that qualifies. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll deal with it. Thank you. you no, know, I had, I had, listen, I'm a macho guy. I get it. Okay. You are. I, had a, <laughs> I had a, I had a concussion, um, five, six years ago, bad concussion. Uh, and it took me a while to acknowledge it and how bad it was. But sometimes when you have trauma, you're so busy dealing with the symptom that you don't understand you have, the symptom is not the trauma. The symptom is the result of the trauma. Mm, so okay. the, sometimes the symptom will take over our attention and not the trauma. So we never really deal with the trauma, but we have to deal with the trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'm going to step it up with the visits to Dr. Cameron and Dr. Natalia. I appreciate it. All right. Kelly had a question about something. I forgot what it was. Yes. So I'll be quick. Cause I know where it sits. Um, so my last lingering issue these days is sulfur sensitivity. And I didn't really know what the deal was, except finally I started connecting it when I'd have onions and garlic. And so I'm MTHFR, um, like homozygous. So I already have methylation issues. Um, but, and then I had a full biome like analysis recently and I didn't have much in the way of like lactobacillus. And so I've been supplementing that, hoping maybe that is the answer, but I'm still just imbalanced. And I feel like I eat well at this point, so I'm not really sure how to fix it. And just, I feel like my body needs to be shocked out of it or something. I mean, that sounds ridiculous and scary, but. <laughs> Kelly, do you, do you have a chiropractor that you work with? Mm -mm. Okay. So one thing that I would suggest, cause you're doing so many things, your progress has been fantastic. Um, I would strongly suggest finding a chiropractor that thinks like we're talking here okay. and work with them to, when you say, uh, when you say that you have an imbalance or that you're trying to figure it out, get that you have to get your nervous system, make sure that your nervous system is clear because okay. otherwise, otherwise you will never truly find your center. Because what happens when your body, when your nervous system is out of whack, if there's interference there, if there's pressure, it, your body, let's just say the message is going to your, you get a sensory input from the environment that says to do one thing. And the message gets altered as it goes to your brain and gets a signal that's an altered signal, sends a signal back down to the body in a response that's an altered response from an altered signal. Okay. Yeah. And this is going on constant interference in the communication pathway between the brain and the body. So your hormones get out of balance, your chemistry gets out of balance, but it never has a, really the possibility 
to get in balance, truly in balance, uh, because you're constantly balancing out a system that whose monitoring system is not working properly. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So you end up, this is why people, what you're described, this is why people will get on one medication side effect, then they treat the side effect, then they treat the other side effect, because it's the body never gets centered. Mm-hmm. So you've come so far to be at this point, to be conscious, to be able to have the ability to choose. Mm-hmm. I would make a choice to go get your nervous system cleared out, balanced out, so your okay. body can truly center you. Okay. And so to find a good chiropractor who thinks like this, um, I'm in the San Francisco area. Do I, is uh, there, I mean, do you know anyone or should I just ask my friends or? Uh, I, I do know people and uh, where in San Francisco are you right I'm, in? I'm, San, is... No, I'm South. I'm in San Mateo. So just South of San Francisco. Okay. So uh, if you'll do me a favor, shoot me an email, Dr. Plasker at 100yearlifestyle.com. Okay. I will find you somebody in San Mateo. I don't know that we have anybody in San Mateo, okay. but, uh, but I'll find you. So I know a lot of chiropractors in, uh, in California. Yeah. Yeah. It, we like chiropractors here. Um, so Dr. Plasker at what? What is the rest of your? At 100, the number 100 yearlifestyle.com. Okay. Thank you. And give me like 48 hours and I'll find you somebody. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. And Kelly, you're going to feel awesome once you start going consistently. Oh, I'm like, so excited because I do feel like yeah. I need some refinement. It's the best investment our family ever made as far as our health goes. It, we, we don't have a primary care doctor right now. My kids have to sign up for school. We're writing down our chiropractor. That's it. We're so just, great. Yeah, it's just great. And when they and when they feel, you know, they have something going on, we just make sure we get them a chiropractor appointment real soon and, you know, things work out. Okay, wait, so Lisa's asking, I have severe vertigo and dizziness from Lyme. So a neurological chiro who um, had me do cross brain body exercises, which helped greatly. Well, thank you, Lisa. That's a good chiropractor. Yeah, That's where where you. where do you live? Where do you live, Lisa? Um, she's not responding right now. Oh, Livermore, California. Very good. Very good. Okay. And Frankie says, my son had an IV rosafin for late stage Lyme because I didn't want his gut affected and it was short treatment one time a week for four weeks. And then because he was uh, a heighted something, I can't, I can't uh, read this right now. Wait a second. Um, he was at a heightened state of sensitivity. He needed to alter his diet, blood type to eliminate all nightshades 20 years with no more symptoms. Yay, that's great. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of good um, stories about people getting better from Lyme, which I'm not even sure that I have. It's just, you know, I've got, I've got a lot of symptoms, so. Yeah, and then let me, so if you say that you're not sure, let me, one other thing that's really important, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to be careful with labels. Yeah, okay. Um, I had a guy, true story, this guy, um, 73 years old, uh, fairly new patient member of our practice. He came in, I think maybe six, eight weeks ago. Uh, he said when he was six years old, he broke his neck and the doctor, you know, did whatever he did back then, took an x-ray. Um, this is now 60 years ago, 67 years ago. Uh, doctor took x-rays, said, you got a broken neck, put him in a body cast, wore a body cast, uh, for about a year. Uh, and uh, took the body cast off. And this guy has been fragile and scared to do anything his whole life ever since then. So he came in and he uh, took an x-ray and there was no sign ever of a broken neck. There was no sign ever of a broken neck? No sign of a broken neck. And I said to him, I said, Fred, listen, man, I said, um, I don't see a sign, any sign, any indication that you ever had a broken neck. Um, I said, so, uh, and he was scared to have me adjust his neck. So he's freaking out like this. And I smoothly, gently adjusted his neck. Three visits later, he says, you're turning me into an owl. And he's like moving his head all around. But here's, so it's exciting that he's getting results. But here's what's the most important thing. 
This guy has lived his entire life based on a faulty premise. Right. That is a problem. Yep. So I would be careful of using labels because yep. they're popular labels. Mm -hmm. Lyme disease is a fad label now. Yep. Everybody's being, you know, there's so many things that are being blamed on Lyme disease when people have not been tested. I would just be very cautious and careful about labels, remove the interference and let your body do its thing. And remove it, get it out of your life and keep it out of your life. Don't just treat the symptoms. Don't just treat the interference like an aspirin. Get it out of your life. Okay. So that means like not just taking supplements or whatever it would be, making sure that I'm fully detoxing or whatever that in interference is. And a lot of the treatment for Epstein-Barr or Lyme anyway, is just detoxing. And that's, that's an important thing for me to do. I mean, I've been exposed to a lot of toxins. My family was sprayed by a helicopter with some of the most toxic weed killer on the planet, you know? So, I mean, there's stuff I'm sure that needs to come out. So, um, yeah. Well, yes. all right. So, um, okay. Yes. And Lisa's agreeing about labeling and RN is, yeah, it is. There's all different kinds of reasons for this. So, and what's good, the person that told me this anyway, said that, you know, don't say that you have Lyme. It's just a, you, you know, you have this Borrelia bacteria, you also have a team bar and you, you just need to get the stuff cleared up. So, right. So yeah. instead of searching for the label, search yeah. for the interference, remove it and keep it out of your life. Oh, I love that way of thinking. Thank you. What is interfering with my body healing itself and purge that, get rid of that. Yeah. And then learn to love the things that are good for you and don't feel like you're missing out because all the things that you feel like are treats are really tricks in disguise. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I've been saying that they're not a treat, they're a threat, but I appreciate tricks in disguise too. That's something that uh, our moms can relate to. Wow, well, wonderful. Does anybody else have any other burning questions? It is 9.13, so we do need to wrap it up. But- um, Thanks so much, really, that was great. Yeah, that was really great. Very helpful, Dr. Plasker. Thank you for being willing just to take whatever questions we throw your way. <laughs> I appreciate it, all different My kinds. My pleasure.